How's it going everybody? In this video we're going to wrap up our inter-AS section by focusing on the last inter-AS option which is option D. Now this one is kind of a white whale of the inter-AS capabilities which kind of intermix two of them option A and option B and basically the way that it works is you're gonna run the control plane via option B so it's a single control plane connection between the service providers but you're going to have multiple VRFs configured on the ASBRs and that's going to be the data plane connection but you're not actually going to form BGP peerings or any other connectivity between the ASPRs via option A. Option A is simply there for the data plane. And in order, and you might be thinking, okay, well, how do you get both of them to work together? You know, because in option A, you configured BGP peerings in the, the each customer in order to peer, and that was the exchange. And that's true, but that's specifically option A. Option B, you configure a single connection, and then everything goes across that wire or that connection and that's both your control plane and your data plane. With option A and B or option D as it's colloquial to refer to, I can never say colloquial correctly. I think I said it right then. But basically you form a connection between the routers via B but you're configuring some mapping configurations globally underneath the VRF. And what you're basically doing is you're referring to the command as inter-AS hybrid. So again, the way that this works, go ahead and pull the pen, pen pad out, is you are forming a connection from here to here in option B, right? It's, option, it's an option B connection between the ASPRs. There is no connections here between the the VRF, so there's no dynamic peering at a, at a VRF level, so this is not there, right? That doesn't come into play. So because of that, you have to have some way to map the VRF level configuration to the option B configuration, and that is using the command enter AS hybrid. Now this is configured in two different places. It's configured at the VRF level, which we're only going to do one VRF, just to make it simple. And the other way you do this is globally under a BGP. So you go router BGP1, for example. And you would type in, you get the, the normal global configuration peering for option B. So you would do your 12.5.6.6 remote AS remote, remote AS of uh, two, and then you would type in address family uh, VPN V4, and you would activate the adjacency, so 12.5.6.6 activate, and then you would add the command 1.12.5.6.6 enter AS, well, in this case here would be hybrid, now one thing you have to do underneath the VRF is you actually have to get specify a next hop. And the next hop is going to be the IP address on Okay, everything seems to be okay now. Um, next hop on 12.5.6.6, which is going to be CSR6 aside. And that's going to tie with this command being applied at the so let's just draw an arrow to connect these two together. So enter AS hybrid next top 12.5.6.6 is put underneath the uh, the VRF level. So VRF C1 underneath address family IPv4. Once you do all that and get it tied together, then you go underneath BGP and you specify for that uh, the VPN v4 peering, enter AS hybrid, and this and this work together in order for the control plane to come into play. Now that is one of the, that's the majority of the config. Every example of this that I've ever seen done, and I had to Google a lot of stuff in order to figure out how to make it actually work because it's not well documented. Um, 
and the documentation that I read was when you go to configure and set this up, every example that I read on was the same route target value on the PE router and the ASBR, which made it very easy to work with. But in my a case, I have unique route targets on every one of my uh, edge devices, ASBRs and provider edge routers. So what I ended up having to do is do a route target import on CSR5 for 2 colon 6, or I'm sorry, uh, no, I imported CSR6 is um, well, I, I, 2 colon 6 seems wrong. Um, I imported CSR6's route target value in on R5, and then on R6, uh, I did a route target import for route CSR5's route target value for customer 1. And that actually ties back to the option B setup, where you have to have a way of differentiating the traffic so or to identify the traffic I should say and the reason why that's necessary is because the option B configuration being the control plane you're maintaining the BGP connectivity state across the eBGP peering so when CSR 5 receives that he's gonna get the route target value that CSR 6 is exporting and he needs to import that on this side same thing with 5. When 5 propagates the route to CSR 6, CSR 6 needs to import that for customer 1 so that it knows to take whatever route CSR 5 is advertising for CSR 5 and um, CSR 2 for customer 1. That needs to be imported on CSR 6 so that the PE routers can receive the routes. So it's a little kludgy when you start to go do it. But once you go through the process and get it up and running, it's actually pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and take a look at deploying this and get it up and running. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way. And so what I'm gonna do is on CSR5, um, I have some debugs set up on, on here. And I'm gonna do a debug on CSR5. So let's go ahead and get the config in play here. And we're gonna do a debug BGP IPv4 unicast I'm sorry, uh, VPNv4 unicast update and a debug. Uh, yeah, that should be all I need to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show run VRFC1. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on to, uh, yeah, that'll work because it's two colon. That should work, yeah, it is two colon six now that I think about it. I'm gonna go underneath the global config here and I'm gonna type in uh, VRF definition C1, and then underneath address family IPv4, I'm gonna type in here, enter AS hybrid, and next top, and I'm gonna specify, you don't specify, actually I was incorrect earlier, where I said you need to do the 12.5.6.6 next top, that's actually incorrect. You actually have to do, uh, do show run interface gig 3.101, and what you have to do is you have to tie it to this IP address, but on CSR 6's side, so 101.5.6.6. So I'm gonna type in enter AS hybrid, next top is gonna be 101.5.6.6. So this is the VRF writing table is being reloaded to enforce this new configuration. So I'm, then I'm gonna to go to router BGP1, neighbor of 12.5.6.6, remote AS of two, and then underneath address family VPNv4, I'm gonna hit the up arrow, I'm gonna activate the, the peering, and then I'm also gonna type in enter AS hybrid. Okay. Now, now that I've done that, I'm gonna go do the same thing on CSR6. So I'm gonna come up here to global config, VRF definition C1, address family IPv4, I type in neighbor, I'm sorry, enter AS hybrid 101.5.6.5. Next top, uh, 101.5.6.5. So it's gonna go ahead and do that, oh, which is the reloading of the, the rib. So router BGP2, neighbor of 12.5.6.5, remote AS of one, address family VPNv4, activate the adjacency, or the peering, I keep saying adjacency, I don't mean to say it, and then enter AS hybrid. Now what's gonna end up happening 
is CSR5 is going to learn a whole bunch of new stuff in. And at first it didn't hit me. I was like, why? Because on CSR, if we go to like Route Reflector 1, for example, and we look at the show, BGP, BPMV4, Unicast, all, I was looking at this, I'm like, well, why am I not learning any routes? Now, CSR5, do show, BGP, VPNV4, Unicast, all. Like, I'm learning prefixes. Like, for customer one, right here, two colon one, I'm learning routes from, I got 25 and 28 being learned, right? So I'm like, okay, that's that's great. But then when I looked at the route reflector and I hit the up arrow, I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, why is this not working? And I, I had to, like, rack my brain. And so let's go ahead and scoot this up a little bit so it's easier for you guys to see. Let's scoot up here a little bit higher. And when I was coming through here, it wasn't seriously obvious as to what the problem was. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, what is going on here? And when I saw it, I was like, okay, down here at the end, it says route target two colon six, right? So it's receiving it. Now it's gonna receive that value regardless of what's happening. And the reason why it's receiving that is because if we do a do show run section BGP, we have the no BGP default route target filter on. Now, te technically speaking, we don't need that here. And you might say, well, why not? Well, the main reason is because we have the VRS locally configured. So we're already doing the route target imports and we're exporting certain route targets. But remember that just because it's there doesn't mean we're going to accept it. Right? Because I can do the same thing on CSR1 to receive the control plane, right? But in this case here, I was like, well, how come it's not importing? Because it's, 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 it's there, you know, it's not filtering the route targets. But then I looked at the do show run uh, VRF C1, and I was like, oh, but I'm, I'm not importing it. And when we were doing option B and then option C, where we just had to make sure to import whatever was configured on the, uh, and I'm sorry, an option A, I believe we did it as well, um, where we had to import what the remote PE was sending, but we didn't have to worry about the um, the, a, the remote ASPR. So then I was like, okay, well, BRF definition C1, address family, I, or I'm sorry, um, I don't remember exactly where I saw it, but I saw this value here, and I'm like, okay, so then I went over to CSR1, and then I did a debug BGP VPNV4 unicast all, or sorry, um, updates. Let me go ahead and get out of the way. And then I did a, whoops. Then I did a clear IP BGP star soft. And I was looking through here, and I was like, okay, everything looks good. And it wasn't until, trying to see right here. Oh, no, that's not it. Uh, let's see, was it was it here? See, I'm not even getting anything from router five, right? And that was the, that was a frustrating part because I'm sitting here beating my head against the wall. I'm actually looking for the value to see if there's anything in here that gives it away, that makes it obvious as to what the problem is. And there wasn't, and that was the part that was that I was struggling with. I was like, why is this not working? So I went back to the route reflector. I hit the up arrow, you know, and I'm still not receiving anything. And that's, that was when I had to come back to CSR5. And then I did a, I'm trying to remember what, let me see if I can't scroll back and see if there wasn't a specific output that, because I remember typing the command in I don't know if I'll go, let me go far enough back. I might have to increase my scroll back rate. But I, when I was looking through the outputs, I eventually saw the route target of two colon six. And if we scroll back up here a little bit, you actually do see RT two colon six come in. And it's got the updates, it's got 21 and 28. But I, when I saw this, I'm pretty sure it was this specific value. When I saw that, I was like, wait a minute. I'm not importing that particular route target value. So I went, to, so I, this is one of those times where it's like, okay, let me see if doing this will fix it. And so I did that and BRF definition C1. I did a route target import of two colon six. And as soon as I did that, it takes a couple seconds for it to trigger, but 
let me do clear IP BGP star soft. So then I did that and I'm like, okay. And what I was expecting on router one, route reflector one is an influx of updates. So what should happen if I do summary, I am, oh, five is down, okay. So why is five down? Let me just double check for five. Do show run section BGP. Oh, I took the neighbor adjacency out. Router BGP one, neighbor of 1.0.0.101, remote AS of one, address family IPv4, or, um, VPNv4 unicast, activate, and next top self. So I got that and I was like, so then I went back to route reflector one, I hit the up arrow and I was like, okay. And then I, that's when I realized looking at the updates that it was, wasn't coming through. And I was like, I'm not exporting it. And then on CSR one, when we look at this, we see that it should show it somewhere. I can't remember if it was five or if it was on one that I saw the update come through because we just got a whole bunch of new information. And let's see if we can't find it through here. I don't remember specifically what uh, what router I was looking at. I'm pretty sure it was five. 95% sure I was, it was on five because I don't see two colon six showing up anywhere. But when I looked on five and I got the update and it said, okay, we have, we're gonna update the information. I go back to route reflector one and then I see all these prefixes come in. I look at CSR4 or CSR1, show BGP, VPNv4, unicast, all. I was like, okay, I'm receiving the routes, which is good. Show IP route VRFC1. And then I saw them come through. And then I went down to router 19 and I did a show IP route. And boom, I had the prefixes. I was like, okay, this is a good sign. So then I went over to CSR6 and I did the exact same thing. Do show, uh, do show run VRFC1. I wasn't importing one colon five. So then I went to um, this guy here and I did uh, route target import one colon five. And as soon as I did that, I went to route reflector two, show BGP VPNv4 unicast. And then I was, um, it takes a couple seconds Let's see if I can do a summary by learning stuff. Yes, I am learning stuff. I actually probably have to clear this config. Let's um, do clear IP BGP star soft. Probably have to do a quick update and go back up here. I'm not learning anything from six. Why is that? Um, section BGP. Okay, I've got all that squared away and I'm pointing to the right next top. So a little bit of a weir weird situation. I do show run VRF C C1. We are importing it. Route Refractor 2. Okay, there I'm learning prefixes now. So I've got the tr stuff from six coming in. I go to CSR eight, and now we have additional prefixes coming in. So show BGP, VPNv4, unicast, all. I am learning stuff from six from CSR five. And if I go to router 25, for example, I do a show IP route, I have BGP routes in the routing table. And it's not a super clean config, right? I mean, it's not terribly involved. You don't have to do tons of things but you still need to make sure that you have the right configuration in play. So then what I did was I went over to router 19 and this is where I do a trace route to um, 10.1.25 25 sourcing from loopback one numerically. And then I was able to get end to end and you'll notice that the data plane we were inside of the VRF, but we don't have a VRF based BGP peering to 
CSR6 to exchange the routing information. So the VRF is used for the data plane, which would allow us to do per VRF route control, but form the peering via BGP for option B, which gives us kind of the best of both worlds. Because then if we want to do, if well, unfortunately it's not supported on XR or for IPv6 as far as I'm aware, is all the documentation I've read. So in the event that if you wanted to use this for, I don't know, uh, do traffic engineering with it, you'd need to add another uh, other iOS routers in order to allow this to be supported and do the connectivity that way. But this was like, hmm, okay. I never had really played with it before. I really didn't understand the purpose of it. But after having played with it and gotten it working, I'm like, okay, this is actually pretty cool. So this would allow you to do... Uh, so there's some advanced connectivity too. I was reading up on the documentation with this. You could also use this in a scenario where like you've got a carrier supporting carrier type of design where the core carrier or the top level hierarchy, because we're going to be diving into carrier supporting carrier in the next set of videos, where you have the core carrier is actually built into a like a confederation or is actually a conglomeration of multiple uh, autonomous systems and you want to peer them together but maintain connectivity via IP you could do this as well so I don't know if I'm gonna to go to that level of demonstration uh, probably have to play with it for sure but I wanted to thoroughly cover all the different inter AS options and all the different capabilities to go with them at least do my best at doing that so if there's a capability that I've missed or you want to see something else I'm planning on doing the main aspects of carrier supporting carrier in that particular section, but there's a lot of cool things that are going to be tested on as we get further along. So keep your eyes peeled for that type of stuff. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video. And until next time, guys, take it easy.